Hi, and welcome to Dell's Technology Showcase. In this technology brief, we will cover the Dell Remote Access Controller 5.0, also known as the DRAC. This card is supported in all of our ninth generation of servers, so the 1950, 2950, and 1900 chassis, which are available today. Uh, as we add additional ninth generation of servers, we will support this card in those devices as well. We continue to operate out of a web browser, either using HTTP over port 80 or HTTPS over port 443. Across the top uh, of the tab, or first on the, the system summary page, is the details of the chassis, remote access uh, information, including firmware details and baseboard management uh, details. You have the ability to go in and turn a server on, turn it off, reset uh, or power cycle a system. Log files give you the ability to, to see uh, what logs have occurred. These are actually capturing both from server administrator and listening to the baseboard management controller itself. So there's an extra layer of uh, security, regardless of the state of the operating system on the server itself. You will still capture all of your logs here on this remote access controller card. It'll also capture last crash screen. Uh, the server has not crashed yet. As far as configuring the device, uh, this is very simple. Click on the remote access and then on the configuration tab from a network. We've add, added the ability to allow you to share NIC and DRAC on the same system. So for those customers that have minimum number of uh, IP connections or ports in their switches, you now have the ability to share your remote access controller with NIC1 on your server. Again, this is regardless of the state of the operating system. So what we've done is given you the ability to minimize the number of ports for each of the servers in your environment. We obviously will still support a, a dedicated port there. We've also added shared uh, with failover support. You can set static IP addresses or take advantage of DHCP, register within DNS. So you just put in the name there, Click on apply and it will go out and register within your DNS. For those customers that take advantage of intelligent platform management interface, we've added the communications on the remote access controller to the baseboard management controller. And you can, from right here, give channel level uh, communication privileges to those users. There's two different ways to log into this device. There is cache on this controller, 16 megs of cache, and it does have the ability to allow you to configure usernames on each of these devices. The more efficient way, though, is actually to integrate these devices into your Active Directory. So I can basically associate these devices just as you do servers with uh, DHCP and, and IP settings in DNS today. You assign, again, the DNS uh, name here, give it the domain, and it will go out and it will register within DNS. The other nice feature is you do have the ability to assign your administrator groups access to these devices, and that gives uh, single sign-on authentication to be able to, to pass credentials down to the remote access controller. Much easier way to, to deal with user level uh, communication to these devices. There are three levels of users on a remote access controller. There's a user which will basically just be able to see details. There's a power user which will allow you to run tasks and do tests. And then the third level is administrator which gives you the configuration capability on these devices. And that's again something you can accomplish out of Active Directory. We've added SSL communication to these devices. Uh, as well as serial and serial over LAN functionality. So here's the, the settings for each of those different capabilities. And then the services that actually run on this card, there's a, a web server uh, so that you can communicate. And again, we communicate over port 80 for HTTP and HTTPS. We use port 443, and you can see that those are assignable. Uh, SSH, you can configure the port level there, Telnet, uh, remote. Rack Atom is our command line interface, so you can either enable or disable the communications. Uh, configuring SNMP so that you can do discovery of these devices. And then you can also set up the automated system recovery details. 
Additional features we've added to the remote access controller, as you can see down the left-hand side of the screen here, we now are communicating with the baseboard management controller, which gives us the ability to check the status of your battery, fan, intrusion detection, power supplies, temperatures, and voltage, uh, all with the remote access controller. Those are features you needed to look at server administrator in the past four. We're monitoring all of that as a, a separate level down here in the remote access controller as well. And then to show you console redirection, so let's click here on the console tab and fire up a connection. Significantly faster connectivity down into the device as you can see now. There's a drop down menu which allows us to, to nail down this menu system. I can go and do capture the file. I can refresh, do full screen. There's a host of macros. So these features used to be available in the browser before, but we kind of made them a, a little easier to access. And we've also added help docs for uh, the entire remote access controller, so to, to make your role a little bit easier. As far as performance is concerned, uh, we got even faster with this tool, so you now have uh, very fast configuration capabilities, no lag time whatsoever. This is just as if you, this is actually a console session uh, on the device. So you can see the performance is quite nice. I can go in and reconfigure services. I'll leave the session open. I'm going to minimize it. And I'm going to go back into my remote access controller because I want to attach some virtual media now and then show you what that looks like in the console. So with virtual media, you have the ability from wherever you're operating your browser from. So if you are at home on your laptop, and connected VPN into your corporate environment, you can open up a browser and talk to a DRAC card and then attach your floppy drive or your CD-ROM drives. The other thing we've added is both DVD and CD-ROM support. So if I go over here to my ISO farm and open up, say, Windows 2003 and hit the connect button, it's now made a connection to this device uh, from your laptop or from a, a, a share drive on your machine, which gives you the ability to, as I go back over here to my video console redirection, there's the install screen for uh, the ISO that I just mounted. And I can browse that CD as you can see here. By changing the boot order and allowing you to put virtual media high in the boot order, you have the ability to actually boot from the CD-ROM drive so that you could reinstall an operating system. So you could use your Dell Server Assistant CD or you could use a Windows CD to even reinstall an operating system in a pinch. Uh, connectivity is very good over LAN and WAN speeds, as you can see. So that's a pretty good detailed overview of the Dell Remote Access Controller. If you have any questions or would like to see this in more detail, please feel free to work with your account team to work with uh, the Dell Technology Showcase, and we'd be happy to drill down uh, and take you in much, depth, much more depth into this tool. Thank you very much for your time.